Hello the amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new epic Doctor Who review for the day. For this review I am reviewing the fantastic story known as The Day of the Doctor, the 50th anniversary special. And as you can see I've got a nice fantastic figure collection behind me to celebrate the 50th anniversary episode. So of course we've got John Hurt's War Doctor, David Tennant's 10th Doctor, Matt Smith's 11th Doctor, we've got a figure of Clara, we've got a Saigon and of course a Dalek as long with the 10th and 11th Doctor's TARDISes, and of course my custom-made War Doctor TARDIS. So what's making me want to do this review for Day of the Doctor? Well, I was re-watching it recently, and I just kind of want to say what I enjoy about the episode, and there is a little thing that really does bug me, like the fact we... I will talk a bit more about that when I get there, before I dive into the review. So I'm going to show you what I own for the 50th anniversary special. I mean... What do I own for Day of the Doctors? So jumping in, we have the DVD release that we had back in 2013. So yeah, I've got the DVD release. And then of course, in 2014, it was released in the 50th Anniversary Collector's Edition. Collect yeah, a Collector's Edition. And of course, mine is limited to number 04769. And of course, you've got that fantastic imagery of all the TARDISes coming to save Gallifrey. I love that artwork. It's got all the classic TARDISes in it. I absolutely love that artwork at the back. And then, of course, I own the Steelbook to the 50th anniversary specials, including Day of the Doctor. But it's more of Day of the Doctor because Day of the Doctor is the actual 50th anniversary special. So we do have that one. So that is basically what I have to kind of watch it through Steelbook, the collection edition, and, of course, the fantastic DVD release. I also own some other things for Day of the Doctor, like... The fantastic Target book from the story that came out back in 2000, uh, 2018, 19, something like that. So yeah, I do have the Day of the Doctor Target book. And of course, I own something else that's absolutely brilliant and amazing. But I own a couple of pieces of music. Now, I own the Series 5 soundtrack. I own the Series 1 to 2 soundtrack. But I also own... The fantastic soundtrack to Day of the Doctor and Time of the Doctor. I absolutely love this CD because it contains all my favourite tracks from the fantastic 50th anniversary special. I absolutely love this. It's absolutely perfect. It's a great way to re-celebrate the 50th anniversary with some great, decent pieces of Doctor Who music. So I do have the soundtrack. So before I get into the extra review, I kind of want to talk about a thing that literally does a little bit disappoint me for this anniversary special. That the fact we don't have... Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Seth McCoy and Paul McGann in the extra episode. But we do get clips with them when they all come to Gallifrey. So it's a little bit of a nitpick. A little bit of a nitpick. But I can't really moan, can I? If you know, it's like done by clips and stuff. And of course, I wish Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor had a big part to play. Now, we know that Stephen Moffat actually sent the first draft of Day of the Doctor to Christopher Eccleston. And he declined coming in because he thought he was playing a fiddle to the other two Doctors. But I would have loved it if we could have had John Hurt's War Doctor with Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor, David Tennant's Tenth Doctor, and Matt Smith's Eleventh Doctor. I really think that would look absolutely perfect. So, since 2013, I have rewatched this episode so many times. Over 2,000, 3,000 times I have rewatched this episode. I rewatch this mainly around about two to three times a year. It depends what type of month I'm in. I could watch it in the summer. I can watch it in the autumn or spring. I just don't care. I literally can watch this three times a year. I never get bored of watching this every single year. And when this episode first aired back in 2013, now, unfortunately, back then I wasn't doing my own YouTube channel, so I couldn't talk about how great the episode was back then. I never started until 2017. But I did have Facebook at the time, and I still do. And I used to put on Facebook how many times I've watched the Day of the Doctor. And I had a very, very fantastic, amazing friend named Jess Norton. And unfortunately, Jess passed away in 2016. So I haven't, I lost a very good friend back then. And she asked me when we used to go to college, oh, how many times have you watched Day of the Doctor? And I used to say, oh, I've watched it 15 times. She used to look like gobsmacked. I can actually sit down and watch it over and over and over and over and over again. And of course, I didn't just finish watching it at 15. I mean, up until the April, I ended up watching it 150 times. And she just couldn't believe how many times I can actually sit down and rewatch the episode. I watched it. I have to be honest with you. I do watch Day of the Doctor more than The Time of the Doctor. The Time of the Doctor, I've only watched like now and again. 
where the 50th anniversary anniversary, I just can go back and watch it every single year, three, four times a year, two maybe, but definitely three. I absolutely just love the anniversary special for Dead of the Doctor. So I'm going to talk about the plot. Now, we re they reuse for this fantastic episode the actual original title sequence from William Hartnell's Doctor, which is something I absolutely love and I still love it today because the fact that this is the first time people got to see it in HD as well, the William Hartnell title sequence. And this is way before the fantastic Doctor Who Collection set started to roll out and, of course, with the animation. So this is the very first time people got to see William Hartnell's title sequence in cinemas and, of course, in HD on BBC One. And then, of course, we've got to a scene of Coal Hill School that also plays a big part in the Doctor Who history, as it is the school that introduced us to Ian and Barbara and Susan before they basically forced their way into the Doctor and the TARDIS. And, of course, Coal Hill School did return in the fantastic episode known as Remembrance of the Daleks. And then, of course, Coal Hill School does return after Day of the Doctor in Series 8, and of course Series 9, and it also plays a big part in the Doctor Who spin-off known as Class, which I absolutely loved. I honestly do have to admit, I do love Class. I really wish they carried on with a second series. That cliffhanger. Oh, top notch. I just wish Class kind of continued. I really do wish Class would return. So then, of course, you kind of got Clara getting a message from the reception saying, we've just had a call from you from your doctor. She goes, did you leave an address? And then, of course, she gets on a motor, on the motorbike or the quadricidal bike that we see back in the Bells of St. John. And she goes to the tires. And the doctor goes, door. And she literally clicks her fingers. He goes, fancy a week in Esper training. And she goes, or oh, followed by future Mars. And I love the way how the doctor literally hugs her and he goes, hmm, I've, how's school? Good. Have you learned anything? Nothing. I absolutely love the way how the unit actually do pick up the tires and the doctor is there inside and he gives Kate... A phone call, Kate, Kate Stewart, and he literally goes, Ah, Doctor, I found we found your tires in the field. No kidding! And he literally pulls it. Oh my God, Doctor, I'm so sorry. I didn't know he was in there. And then, of course, when the helicopter changes to go towards the fantastic set of the the un, the London Paint Gallery, the Art Gallery, and, of course, you've got the little level of Doctor hanging at the tires and literally gets hit in the phone, and he literally goes, Next time, would it just kill you to knock... <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene. I really love the opening. I really do love the opening. So then, of course, they get to the, well, as I said, the art the art gallery for London. And then, of course, as they go in, they see a 3D painting of Gallifrey. Now, it has two names, Gallifrey Falls or No More. As we do find out later in the episode by a fantastic actor who does return to Doctor Who after very, very long time, since 1981. And, of course, a certain scene in 1993's Dimension in Time, aka Tom Baker returns as a creator, a future incarnation of the Doctor, which we will find out a bit later on. I also love the fact how basically they go into the underground and they see Queen Elizabeth I with and with the Tenth Doctor, and of course you get cut back to 155050. And of course the Doctor is showing Queen Victoria Queen Elizabeth around the TARDIS, and then of course it goes and ding, what's that? It's a machine that goes ding. It lights up in the presence of Shakespeare's with DNA. And I love the way how he literally thinks it's the is the queen. And then he goes, oh, it was the horse. I'm going to be king. <laughs> I really love the way how the doctor just looks so horrified in his 10th incarnation. Oh, uh, I'm going to be king. Oh, gr oh great word, doctor. The virgin, the virgin queen? Yeah, great one. <laughs> I love it. I mean, only the doc it's only the tenth doctor that can actually end up getting engaged to the Virgin Queen. <laughs> uh, now I don't really care because the the whole romance thing is not just there. The doctor just kind of proposed because she thought he thought well he thought she was a Saigon <laughs> and he just backfires on him. <laughs> so it's nothing like Basically, what happened between him and Rose is just an accidentally proposal, thinking, I ain't got the shape shift in Saigons. Oh, wait, no, I haven't. It's the horse. Oh, I'm going to be king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to be at David Hill's performance with jo uh, the actress that plays Queen Elizabeth, Jonah Page. Oh, absolutely fantastic chemistry between the two. <laughs> 
There's some fantastic chemistry between the two of them. <laughs> I just love it. Oh, I'm going to be king. <laughs> I absolutely love that scene. I honestly have to admit, I absolutely love... I honestly have to admit, I do love that scene. It is iconic. Oh, I'm going to be king. <laughs> And then, of course, you get into the plot where he goes into the forest and he's there talking to a bunny rabbit saying, whatever you got planned, forget it, I'm the doctor. And, you, and you're and you basically just a bunny rabbit, aren't you? Yeah, um, just a general warning. <laughs> I love that. And then, of course, we end up having the two versions of Queen Elizabeth because you got the real one and the one that basically the side gone shapeshift into her. And, of course, a time fissure opens up that basically cuts to back into the present day with the 11th Doctor and, of course, Clara. And as they're going to investigate, they find out something has broken out paintings of the art gallery. And everything that was inside was little figures, but inside the actual paintings were Saigons, and they actually used in there to hide for hundreds and hundreds of years until the planet gets a bit more po interesting and then out they pop, out the paintings. And then, of course, the fissure opens. And the I love how the 11th Doctor goes, oh, no, not now. Doctor, no, not now. I'm busy. Oh, I remember this. Sort of remember. You know what? This is where I come in. I love how he literally throws the pheasant and goes, Geronimo! And he literally jumps in and, of course, he bumps into his 10th incarnation. He goes, oh, that's skinny. That's proper skinny. Oi, that's like a matchful effect. I really love the how base that you got them going on. I love the fact how the War Doctor kind of plays into the early scenario as well because before we get to the 10th Doctor scenes, we do have the scenes with the doctor looking at a Gallifrey painting and he says, I was there in the battle. He was there. Me, the one I don't talk about. And that was the day he did, the day I did, the day I killed them all. I absolutely love the fact how John Hurt just absolutely picks up a gun from a soldier and goes, Soldier, I'm going to need your gun. And it just shoots the wall. And you've got Daleks about to shoot these fantastic Gallifreyan children with the family members. And he goes, No, please, please let my children survive. The Doctor has been the time of the Doctor, the Doctor. And of course, you just got the tires sound and literally smashes through the wall, damage the dike, and he goes, The Doctor is retreating. What are these words? Explain. Explain. And I just love how the soldier literally just shoots the Dalek. And then, of course, you cut to the Time Lords in the cathedral bit. And he goes, What is the, what is the, We've had a breach inside the actual security faults. The moment's been talk. What's the moment? There's only one man who can try. And I love the fact how basically that one man is the war doctor. And of course, he ends up meeting a future version of a companion, aka Billy Piper. She returns to be the moment in this episode. And I love how Billy Piper doesn't have anything to do with Dave Tent's 10th Doctor, which I just absolutely love about it because it's great to see her having, a, not actually playing Rose, but playing a kind of festation of Rose, like a future sort of thing from the moment. And I like how basically she reacts with John Hurt's War Doctor. It's actually quite good. I really like the whole reacting between the two of them. Very great chemistry. And she's the one that opens up the freshers. And of course, the War Doctor just goes to meet his two future incarnations. And of course, I do this. Now, would any of you point to the right direction of the Doctor? And I love how David literally pulls out his Sonic and Matt Smith pulls out his. And he goes, really? You're both me? Even that one? Yes, you are my future self. Yes. Am I having a midnight crisis? <laughs> because they've gone back to being young. I absolutely love that. Am I, going, am I having a midlife crisis? I also love like, other scenes as well, like in the prison dungeon where they find that the door wasn't locked because of Clara, where she goes, well, uh, that should have been locked. Why was that locked? And you just got Queen Elizabeth going, well, I was curious to see what you would do if you had to, uh, the opportunity to escape. I love how the Thames Doctor really insults her and basically, and he goes, now my Elizabeth, the real Elizabeth, wouldn't do that. Right, tell me, why we feel your whole plan? I love the way she goes, because that is not my plan. And I am the real Elizabeth. <laughs> and, I love the stuff, and the doctor just goes, okay, backtrack in a moment. <laughs> and then, of course, I love the scene where they go into the ties after the wedding between the 10th and Queen Elizabeth. And she goes, of course, my love, I will wait for you, my love. And basically, they go into the ties and then, of course... The war doctor goes, ah, oh, this is his grand... I thought it would have been cleaner. Ah, oh, this is his grand phrase. And then, of course, the, decks, the, the desktops keep flitching, glitching. So, of course, you end up in the 10th Doctor's Ties, then you go straight to the war doctor's Ties, and then you go straight into the 11th Doctor's Ties, where the Doctor basically stabilises it. And you have that iconic moment from the 10th Doctor saying, oh, you redecorated, haven't you? Hmm, I don't like it. And, of course, 
it's the same thing Patrick Charlton said to John Pertwee's doctor. Oh, I see you've done the toys up a bit, haven't you? Hmm, I don't like it. I absolutely love the how that kind of brings me back second Doctor vibes with David Tennant's Doctor. Just then, it just basically feels great because normally it's the second Doctor that normally says, "Oh, you've had this place redecorated, haven't you?" Hmm, I don't like it. And I love the way how the Tennant Doctor goes, "Oh, you redecorated." Hmm, I don't like it. Oh yeah. Oh, you never did. Right then, to the London, to the art gallery to stop the Saigons. No, they're inside Unit Black Q in the Black Archive. And I love the look how they all just look at Clara like, and she's like. Okay, you've heard of that then. <laughs> and then, of course, the Doctor used the space time trying to go to contact Kate. And he's saying, science leads, Kate. That's what I meant. That's what your father meant. Please don't tell me about to do anything stupid. And then, of course, they find a way to get into the actual Black Vault where they have the painting move into it. And in, they're actually inside the painting in the art gallery. And they use the side screwdrivers to break the, the way out by having a dark smash in the painting and of course you've got the doctors being iconic saying hello i'm the doctor sorry about the dalek and the showing off i really love that scene then of course i love the scene as well after the doctor kind of wipes the zygons and the human's mind so basically they have that peace treat that kind of just come back and bite them on the ass in the zygon inversion and the zygon inversion in series nine and then, of course, we cut back to Gallifrey with Doctor about to press the button. She goes, you've seen your two future selves. Those two, they are very extraordinary. And then, of course, they do break the barrier and they literally go back to the barn. And, of course, you have that fantastic moment where, basically, I love the way how it connects to the Doctor's psych, like, the Doctor's fantastic psych ability, psych abilities, where, basically, the then Doctor says with his own screwdriver, I've had 400 years to think about this. This is the way. Yes, it's just a billion Daleks. That, yes, there is. Yes, there is. But and some of those billion Billocks Daleks don't know. Because if they're dead, they're probably called reinforcements. What's that? This time, there's three of us. I love how basically it goes from the 11th Doctor to the 10th Doctor, where the 10th Doctor goes, oh, 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 yes, oh. And he literally slaps his tires. And of course, the War Doctor then gets the idea. And of course, it's absolutely brilliant. He goes, ah, ha, ha, ha. I've been thinking about this for centuries. I absolutely love that. I really love that scene. And of course, you cut to the scene where they all go to Gallifrey and they're talking to the Time Lords. And he goes, but the calculus will take hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But don't worry. I started a very long time ago. I love how we have that fantastic clips of all the Doctors, including the fantastic first Doctor going, call into the Time Lords of Gallifrey. This is the Doctor. You might say I've been doing this for all my lives. I just love the how they literally do pick scenes out of episodes of classic Doctors. Like for Paul McGowan, we get scenes from the TV movie. We have scenes from Sesame Quay from Battlefield and his titles. Peter Davison We've got scenes from what looks like to be Ark of Infinity. And of course, Tom Baker has that this clips from Tom Baker's. It was being used, I believe, from the Key to Time season. Whenever we watch that season, I do see like, what clips they kind of picked. And of course, you've got John Pertwee. I believe they kind of used the clips from. The episode, oh, I can't remember what episode it was, but it looks like they kind of took the clips out from Connery in Space, maybe. Connery in Space, because that's where he's literally looking at the Times Contour and he starts taking off because of the Time Lords. And of course, you've got Patrick Troughton. I love some Troughton. So the fact they actually do have clips of Patrick Troughton's Doctor, where he says, good luck. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that moment when you just got that clip of Patrick Troughton. And of course, you've got William Hartnell's Doctor. And of course, you've got the three Doctors, so Gallifrey stands... And, of course, they all do go back into their own time zones afterwards. And, of course, the 10th Doctor says that stupid line, oh, I don't want to go. Which, basically, I don't really mind in this episode because he's not crying like a big bubbling baboon. A big bubbling baboon. Like he is in the end of time. Where he's there going, I don't want to go. You know, I just want to go in that episode to up to it. But I actually don't mind that line here because it's actually done really good. It's not like he's crying. It's like, oh, because we need to find a new destination because I really don't want to go. So I do love that bit. And then, of course, we have some iconic scenes between the Doctor and the War Doctor. And, of course, I love that scene with all the Tyson and he goes, ah, which one's mine? Ah, and, of course, you get into the Tyson and he's there literally about to regenerate into Christopher Eccleston because you just kind of have that fantastic shot where he goes, of course, it makes sense. Raring a bit thin. I do hope the ears were a little bit less conciliate this time. And then, of course, you do see him go round by the eyes to Christopher Eccleston, which is absolutely perfect. I also love the ending bit with basically the whole conversation between the 11th Doctor and the creator, a.k.a. Tom Baker and Matt Smith. I absolutely love that. That's done so well. You know what? I could retire. I could retire and become the great creator of this place. You know, I really think you might. 
I never forget a face. Oh, I know you don't. But you might find yourself revisiting a few of the old favourites, hey? I really think that the creator is actually the 14th Doctor because the 14th Doctor, because of the whole split, split regeneration or the bi generation, I kind of am hoping that the 14th Doctor does retire because we do know he does retire. And basically, I would love the fact that if it is the 14th Doctor, he regenerates into Tom Baker's face and becomes the creator of the London Underground. And of course, the same, he regenerates into Colin Baker, like me here for Big Finish. And then, of course, we have that fantastic speech at the end where the Doctor talking about Clara saying, you don't go anywhere, you're just wandering around a bit. But that's not true. My destination is the same as yours, the same for anybody's. Home, the long way around. And I just love that pan out shot with basically oh, all 12 versions of the Doctor. So we've got Hartnell, we've got Troughton, we've got Pertwee, we've got Baker, we've got Davison, we've got Baker, we've got McCoy, we've got McGowan, we've got Hurt, we've got Heckelson, we've got Tennant, and then, of course, we've got Matt Smith. And you just got them all looking up. In that fantastic shop. Now, I know they are all Waxworth dolls. I know that's all Waxworth dolls. But it's still quite good to have that imagery of all of the Doctors basically on the cloud and looking up to Gallifrey. Which is something I absolutely love. And that's one of my favourite scenes of modern Doctor Who. And then, of course, you get into the fantastic title sequence. At the end of it, where you kind of got images through the, like, all the names. You've got William Hartnell, you've got Patrick Triton's face, you've got John Pertwee's face, Tom Baker's face, Colin Baker's, Peter Davison's, Colin Baker's, Celeste McCoy, Paul McGann, Chris Wilkinson, David Tennant, Matt Smith. I just love how we have all those faces in the actual type, like the credit titles, and it's absolutely perfect. So, yeah, I really do love Day of the Doctor. I mean, it's a fantastic episode, as you can tell. I have got, I have watched this over a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. God knows how many times I rewatch this episode because I do watch it between two to three times a year. And I just absolutely love Day of the Doctor. I cannot ever get enough of it. I think I've done a review on it before, but not up to scale because I wanted to talk about how great I was and how much I love the episode. And I remember watching this back in college. I mean, I never got bored of it. Never, never, ever, ever get bored of Day of the Doctor. To me, Day of the Doctor and, of course, the 60th anniversary of The Giggle, I probably watch them two the most for anniversary specials as well as Day of the Do uh, for the Three Doctors and the Five Doctors because I just love anniversary specials. But to me, I don't know what to actually suggest which is the best one because to me, the best one is always going to be the Five Doctors followed by the Three Doctors, followed by Day of the Doctor, followed by... Oh, uh, probably the Giggle. I, I don't know. I need to do a video how I rank the anniversary specials because the Giggle is basically one of three specials for the 60th anniversary. So I don't really know which one I prefer out of all the anniversary specials. I probably need to do a, sit down and think a big massive ranking video for ranking the anniversary specials. So for me to actually rate Day of the Doctor, it's definitely a big massive A+. And out of all of modern Doctor Who, out of like, from the revival from 2005 up until Basic Church on Ruby Road, this is honestly the best ever episode that modern Doctor Who has ever put out. Now, you're probably wanting to shoot me for saying that, but I'm sorry, but it actually is. It literally is the best episode from modern Doctor Who in total. And it is definitely a big, massive A+. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of Day of the Doctor? How many times do you own Day of the Doctor? Like me, do you own it like five times with different, uh, different sort of medias, like the soundtrack, the Target book? Or the two Blu-ray releases, or of course the DVD release. Let me know, please do. Like, subscribe, and share. Enjoy from awesome Doctor Who content. Have a cracking day, you amazing viewers and subscribers.